In this video, you're gonna learn how to run ambient pads for worship with a click track in Ableton Live Session View. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative church leaders. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Ambient pads are one of the best ways to fill in the sound of your worship band, and there's a variety of ways to run pads. One way you can run pads that allows uh, really some great flexibility, especially if you want to use a click track or metronome with your pads, is to run them in Ableton Live. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a really simple project in Ableton Live Session View, as you can see here on my screen. And I'm gonna show you how you can easily trigger up different pad keys for different songs here underneath the uh, master track here in session view and I've even have it triggered for my loop to miss MIDI pedal so if I press song one it plays uh, Lion and the Lamb pads in the key of G at 90 beats per minute in 4-4 time with metronome let's say I want to skip to song three it switches the metronome to 86 beats per minute the pads to F sharp and uh, the time signature to 6-8 and then I can just press the stop button if I'm done and you'll notice there's some nice crossfading and transitions between pads. And usually the way I use Ableton Live is just with arrangement view. In my opinion, it gives me much more flexibility for running my backing tracks and service automation. But if I were to just throw together a quick set list of songs and I wanted a click track and I wanted pads, this is the easiest way to do it in session view. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know step by step, and I'm gonna show you where you can get some free ambient worship pads to get up and running in Ableton Live. So the first thing you need to do is download some free worship pads that you can use in Ableton Live. Go to churchfrontpads.com and that's gonna bring you to a web page where you can request access to a free bundle of church front pads made by my friend Boomer Bait. These pads have a beautiful warm sound to them. Over a thousand worship leaders have already downloaded these pads so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download them for yourself. Click the button at the bottom of the page, enter your information, and click that green button, send me the pads now. And then what's gonna happen is in a few moments, you're gonna receive an email from me, and that email says, here are your free pads. You're gonna go ahead and open that email, click the download button, and that's gonna bring you to where the pads are being hosted on dropbox.com. If you have a Dropbox account with enough space in it, you can add the pads directly into your Dropbox account, or you can just do a direct download. In this example, I'm gonna do direct download, and I'm only gonna use the MP3 files. For most folks, I recommend MP3 files. They're nice and small, easy for you to use. Click direct download here. It's gonna download all 12 keys of the church front pads. And just give it a few moments to download that zipped file. Once the files have downloaded, go ahead and unzip that folder. It's gonna show up in your downloads folder on your computer. I would recommend moving it to a place where those files are gonna be safe. You're not gonna delete them. Um, put them on your computer's hard drive. Put them on an external hard drive. I have an external hard drive for all of my Ableton Live projects. So, and I've actually already pasted my pads in here, but what I would do is I'd go in here and then I'll just paste them where I want to store them like so. So now we have the pads on our computer. We're ready to open them up and start using them in Ableton Live. I'm going to go ahead and open Ableton Live 10 standard. So I'm using Ableton Live 10 standard, but you could use the intro version of Ableton Live and be just fine. Uh, there's a limit on how many different scenes you can create in session view in the intro version of Ableton Live. But for most folks, you're only gonna to need to make as many scenes as you do songs in your worship set list. And for most worship bands, that's maybe four or five or six songs. So this should work just fine in Ableton Live intro as well if you don't wanna buy the full Ableton Live standard version. So here I have a brand new Ableton Live set ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and save this live set as a unique file just so I can easily open it up later. So I'll just go here, go into my worship set list, and I'll just call this um, the, the set list for this coming weekend. So it is going to be um, March the 18th. And I'll just call this uh, Mission Lakewood Worship Set. 
So that'll, that'll be saved on my hard drive, whatever work I do here, that's a unique name um, for the file. And then uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the extra tracks I don't need. So we're in session view, make sure you're not in arrangement view. Uh, I usually use arrangement view for all my Ableton work, but for this, purpose in particular to get, simply get a click and pads, this is the simplest way to do it. So go into session view and in your browser, uh, you're gonna wanna navigate to your pads. So I got mine right here. All, pad, all 12 pads and all 12 keys ready to go. And I'm gonna get rid of extra tracks. I only need one audio track. Uh, you can't run pads and a MIDI track. You want to use just an audio track. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use each scene for each song in our worship set list. So here's what I'm gonna do. Underneath the master track here in session view, I'm gonna put the song name, the song key, the song beats per minute for the tempo, and then also the song time signature. So in order to find that information easily, I already have it in my planning center account. Whenever I create new songs, I put that info in there. If you need to find the beats per minute of a song, I recommend going to multitracks.com um, and just searching the song. And then when you get to the song detail page, like for Glorious Day, you can see the information for beats per minute, time signature, uh, and, and everything else you need to know about the song right there. So that's a quick way to do it if you don't have it in your planning center account. But we're gonna put this information here in the master track and that's gonna make sure that Ableton Live's click is gonna be at the right tempo and then also at the right time signature. So I'm gonna go to my planning center playlist, look at song one, line and lamb, key of G, and 90 beats per minute. So I'm gonna go one, line and the lamb, G, 90 beats per minute. We have to put beats per minute in here. You have to write that out as you rename this and that's gonna trigger Ableton's click track to the right tempo. And then I'm also gonna put 4-4 four, four just to make sure uh, the right time signature in Ableton Live is triggered as well. It's really neat how they do that. You can name the track the appropriate beats per minute and time signature and then it's going to uh, switch it up here. So you can see right now, actually I have it in 6-8, it's at 120. But if I press play, it switches to 4-4 four, four to 90 automatically. So then I'm gonna go to the next song, Tremble, uh, that is B flat and 74, and that song's in 442. Two, Tremble, B flat, 74, uh, and then, oh, beats per minute, gotta put that in there, and then 44. And then the next song is Who You Say I Am, F sharp, and 86, 86 beats per minute. That song's in 68, so I need to put that in there. So three, Who You Say I Am, and that is an F sharp and then that is at 68 beats per minute, and that is in 6.8, let's make sure I got that, or sorry, 86 beats per minute, so I need to rename that, 86. So that's good to go. And then song four, the cross is the final word, that is in B flat and 75, so I'm gonna go four, the cross is the final word, B flat, and 75 beats per minute, and then that one is in 4-4. Four, four. And then song number five, our final song, I Know, is in E, and it is in at 88 beats per minute, and it's in 4-4. Four, four. So I Know, that's in E, um, 88 beats per minute, and then that's in four, four. So I got all my song names. I like to put the numbers just so I know, like one, two, three, four, what order it's in. Uh, and then uh, the keys, and then I have the beats per minute, and then I have time signature. So that's good to go. So now all I have to do is drag my pad tracks and the appropriate keys into the appropriate scene here in session view. Because you can see these scenes line up horizontally. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, the key of G pad for lion and the lamb. So drag that right there. And then the B flat pad or A sharp pad for tremble. And then F sharp is going to be for who you say I am. And let's see, B flat for the cross is the final word. Usually my keys do not uh, change this uh, suddenly in worship sets. I, I've never had a worship set in recent memory that has this many different keys in it, uh, just the way it worked out. And then finally, uh, the key of E right here. So what's gonna happen is when we trigger the, the different songs over here in the master track, it's gonna trigger uh, the pads that go along with them. So here I'll go ahead and press uh, play for Lion and the Lamb. 
And let's say go to the next song. Go to tremble. And you notice how the time signature also changes, so now it's in 6 8. If I wanted to uh, hear the eighth notes in the click track, I often like to do that. I could go under here under rhythm and just click eighth. Helps kind of subdivide it, keep the band and tempo a lot better. And then I know. And notice how it quantizes, it waits until uh, it's finished a measure to count off. You could also change that too by just going under the quantize setting, selecting none. So now it'll instantly change to the right song. One thing you'll notice that we want to change is we want these transitions between the different keys to be a little bit smoother. Right now, when I go from one song to another, it kind of just suddenly changes to the next song. And I want them to crossfade. An easy trick to do this in Ableton Live is to add reverb to your pad's track. So I'm gonna go to Audio Effects and I'm going to go down to Reverb and I'm Hall. And I just want a really thick uh, reverb that's gonna have a long decay. So I'll put this Cathedral reverb and I'll drag it right onto the track with my pads. Uh, I'm gonna adjust it so the EQ is just flat here. Maybe make it so it's not super wet reverb. I don't want it to adjust the tone too much of uh, the, the pads. And then maybe in Increase the de decay time a little bit more. So now listen to this, uh, the, the change in the transitions between the pads. So song one. Notice how it crossfades the pads uh, much better this way. So adding reverb will be a great way to make smooth transitions between your pads in Ableton Live. We also want the triggering of these pads to be nice and simple. A couple ways you can do that. You can press the key command uh, button here so you can assign key commands. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So maybe I have my laptop on stage next to my drummer um, and then you know he or she can trigger up the right song by just pressing the numbers on my keyboard. So I could press number one, that's gonna automatically play the pads in G. Press number two, it's gonna do song number two. And you know also triggering the right click track and uh, time signature for that click track. So key commands are a really easy way to do it. Another way to trigger these different pads and click in Ableton Live is to use the Looptimus uh, MIDI controller. I love this thing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assign these different numbers here, the buttons to the different uh, numbers of songs in my set list. So I'll click the MIDI mapping button, I'll select a song, and then all I have to do is press song one right here, and it assigns um, that MIDI note from this pedal to that song, song two, song three, Song four, song five. And then I also need to assign my stop button here under MIDI mapping, so I'll select the stop and I'll hit my stop button that assigns it there. So now I can play songs and I can stop songs with my foot controller. And finally, there's one more thing I wanna show you how to do, especially if you are new to using Ableton Live, and that is to make sure that your audio outputs are assigned properly. So your click is going to output one and your pads are gonna be going to output two. And it's really easy to do in Ableton Live. First thing though I want to make sure you have set is when you go to Ableton's preferences, go to audio, and then in audio output device, make sure it's just built-in output. This is gonna work for you if you are just pulling the audio from your computer's headphone jack. This is the simplest way to run Ableton Live. Um, so we're good to go, there's two outputs. So what Ableton does is it takes the left and right outputs from your headphone jack and just turn those into outputs one and two. So one is left, two is right. So make sure it's set to built-in output here in preferences. And then over here, Underneath your songs here in the master track, uh, go to Q out, that means uh, click, Q is referring to click, and you wanna set that to one and master out to two. So now when you play, you're gonna hear the click in the left and your pads in the right. And I'll turn on the click right here. And you can hear here, if you're listening to this on your computer speakers or headphones, that the click is right in the left and the pads are on the right. So that's how you make sure that your click tracks on a separate channel on your soundboard and your pads are on a separate channel and you can send your click just to your musicians in ears. 
So that's it. That's probably the simplest way to play ambient pads with a click track in Ableton Live, using Ableton's internal click and using the free church front pads. I've included a link to the free church front pads in the description of this video, so I'll make sure you claim the free pads you can use for your worship ministry. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and leave some love in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions about how to get this up and running, and share this video with your other friends in worship ministry who may want to run a click in pads using Ableton Live. Don't forget to subscribe to the church front channel and hit the notification bell so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.